What's going on guys? TJ here with Kayak USA. Welcome to my channel. Today's video will be another DIY video on the center console of your kayak. Today I'll be doing this on my 2017 Seaghost 130, but this also pertains to other kayaks with this same size center console. We're gonna be going out with the old, and in with the new. Check it out. What's going on Yak Squad? Thanks for stopping back by. If you're not a member of the Yak Squad, all you got to do is smash that subscribe button and you'll become a member of the Yak Squad. I do a lot of kayak DIY videos, a lot of kayak fishing, and a lot of kayak camping videos. If you like what you see today, make sure you smash that thumbs up button and don't forget to subscribe. Today I'm going to be doing a center console upgrade on my Seaghost. If you follow my channel, you know that I just got the new Seaghost 130 uh, about a month ago. And I've added a few things to it. I've added the USB port with the battery pack. I've added the Lowrance Hook 2 5 uh, with the onboard battery. Uh, the mounts. I've added a lot of different stuff to it. And I actually was going to do the hinge kit. And I know if uh, you guys are familiar with the, the Seaghost, a lot of guys are adding the hinge kit to these hatches so that you can hinge them up and access what's inside and while you're out on the water. Uh, it's really complicated. I say complicated. It's just kind of a hassle when you're out on the water and you have to undo these straps, take everything that's on your console off, like if you've got a drink in here, and then you've got to pick this up and kind of move it out of the way to get to stuff, uh, snacks or extra batteries or whatever's in here, or your cell phone, whatever you got in here. It's kind of a hassle to go through all of that just to get in there. Uh, so my initial plan was to do like a lot of these guys are doing and they're buying this little hinge kit or they're making their own hinge kit that you drill into this existing hatch and you put a little shock on here. As a matter of fact, I was going to do a video of me making that exact thing and I've already ordered. I went as far as to even ordering the shocks to do it. Uh, I ordered the shocks off Amazon. I talked with the guy. Uh, I can't remember his name. He's got a few videos on YouTube on how he done his. And I'm not knocking it is it is very well and it's very cool. But I ran across something the other day uh, and it changed my mind completely. I ran across a company in Arkansas who are selling a thing called a Mod Pod 2. And the Mod Pod 2 is this right here. This has a hinge in the middle and it's got all kind of awesome stuff on it. And in a minute I'm going to get the camera closer and we're going to go through this. But it's got a cup holder up front, it's got a hinge in the middle, it's got latches on the front and the back, it's got a magnet built into the front right here, so when you're changing lures, you can literally just throw your lure up here and it will grab it and hold it, uh, so they're not falling around in your boat going everywhere. It's got a, a center hatch right here that fits your cell phone and it's waterproof, it's watertight and sealed. So you shut, you put your phone in there and you don't have to open the whole console to get to your cell phone, which is what you're doing 90% of the time if you're gonna catch a fish or you're, if your phone is put up in the center hatch. You don't have to go through all that. You open this, get your phone, put it back in here. It's also got the bungee straps on the lid for you to slide your phone up under it if you've got like a waterproof case like I do. And I'll just keep it bungeed right here and I can, uh, I can, I use mine to work my GoPros on the front and the rear of the boat, and it's really easy if I've already got my cell phone out. Uh, it's got two built-in built track systems on each side, so if I wanted to move my Lowrance to the center of the boat for a day, uh, I could do that. If I wanted to put a fish up, anything that you can put in these tracks, they're going to be right here. And what makes it even better, oh, well, I, let me know, I don't want to forget, it's got a cup holder here, and it's got this, you take these two screws out, and this plate is replaceable right here. Uh, you can put your mount, you can mount your fish finder right here and it's got these two lines cut out in the plate where you can put a battery in this little box. Now it wouldn't take a big battery, but a battery would fit in there and you could just contain your fish finder into this, you know, besides your transducer that would have to come out of the side. But what is really cool is this has a rubber gasket all the way around and it seals up so tight. So like there's, there's a thin rubber gasket on this factory one. But when you take it out and you put this on here, you can actually, 
it suctions, it's, it's so tight that, I don't know if y'all can hear that, you probably can't, but it's, it's, uh, it's tight. <laughs> I mean, it, it sucks right down on there. And it gives a watertight seal for whatever's in there. But this is the best part about it. You got your drink up here, you got your stuff up here, you need to get in here, you just open the front. You don't have to take everything off the top of this and you can just get whatever you need out of it. I think this is gonna be an awesome addition. So I actually picked this up from a company up in Arkansas uh, called H24 Outdoors and uh, they're really knowledgeable and I'm, I'm gonna go over their info with you here in a little while and tell you exactly how you can get a hold of them and find out if they have one that's gonna, that'll, that'll work with your kayak. But right now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna grab uh, my other camera and I'm gonna do a walk around and uh, I'm gonna show you everything up close and we're gonna make, I'm gonna go over with you exactly what we're gonna have to do to make this fit my kayak. Let's do it. All right, so I switched cameras, but I just wanna get on this camera real quick so I can get up close and show you guys exactly what I'm talking about. Uh, let me make sure the lighting is still good on it. Okay, so here's an up close picture of it. It is very high. It's very well made. It's a lot like the the same plastic as the original. This is the original. You know, if you have a vibe or if you have, a, a, I think it's an old town and stuff like that, they have this same, they all have the same center console. Well, this one is this, made out of the same plastic. It's a little bit smoother, a little bit more shiny. And uh, here's the straps and it fits the phone. Let me find my phone. I have the iPhone 8 and uh, it's hard to do this with one hand, but it fits up under there perfectly. If you can tell that, I mean, this is going to be great. I can't wait to use this. And if you open up this, I think an, a plus would even fit in here because you see how much extra room I've got with this eight and that's in a big otter box. So you should be able to fit a plus in there with no problem. Uh, and it's, and it's watertight. Here's the gasket. I was, well, I don't know if I'll be able to get the gasket. Yeah, there it is. There's a gasket in here. And when you shut it, you, you shut this lock and it locks it and it seals up your phone in there. So if you don't have it in a waterproof case, it'll be good to go. Uh, here's the center hinge. And what's really cool is once we get these latches put in, and I'm going to go over how we're going to do that in just a second, I'll be able to, if you're off the kayak and you don't want to get in this end, you leave this, this side latched and you can open it up from this side. It's, it, since the hinge is in the center, you get the option of having both sides. I don't know if I'll ever open up this end. Uh, this end is probably just gonna stay shut, but I mean, it's good to have that option. Let's see if you can hear the seal on this thing. I don't know if you could hear that or not. This thing seals up so good with that big rubber gasket. But it's got the cup holder here, and right up front, it's got this little, it, it, it's just a, it's a different plastic. It's kind of a harder plastic and it's made so you can actually drill and mount your, your depth finder right here in the center. And it's got the two wire cutouts that just drop down in there. If you take these two screws out, it's nothing but an opening, an open box inside of here. And the, I guess you could add holes to get inside here if you wanted to put your battery actually inside the center console. Uh, it's a really cool add on. You've got two gear track systems, one on each side. It looks like they're maybe eight inches. I don't know. Let's, yeah, it looks like you got about eight inches of gear track on either side. And, and that's about it. I mean, uh, they, I think they retail these things for $85. Uh, I don't know if they have any deals up on them right now. It's the only place I could find that sold these. Uh, so after I talked to the manager and then I talked to the owner about it, uh, I was sold on the product. But here's where it comes into being not for the Vibe and for other kayaks. First of all, the Vibe has this lip, okay? Now this lip may not be on your Old Town or, uh, or, or your Ocean kayak that has this same size center console. It might just be smooth all the way down and you won't have this issue. Uh, the issue you're gonna have with the Vibe is you see the latches here and it doesn't exactly line up with this strap. This strap, and it, and it wouldn't be a problem except for this strap is in a recess, and the reason it's in a recess is so it would be flush when it goes over the old top where it comes up and just straps right up here over this old top. Since this does not line up with this groove, this cutout, which is flush, it, it kind of straddles it, and what we need is we need I'm trying to make sure I explain this very well. You see how far this comes down? So this needs to be completely flat. And 
as you can see, it's not, and it's going to poke out at the bottom. That means we can never get a good seal without this being able to tuck in into the where it needs to go and then seal up. So what we're going to do is we're going to take this screw out. And what's really good about this screw and all, all three, all four screws around this is when you take the screws out, there is an insert in these kayaks. It's a metal insert that is threaded for this size screw. So my plan is, is we're going to take these screws out and then we're going to pull this latch down and get everything center. And I'm going to mark where, right in here somewhere, where the line is on the edge of this insert. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to notch out up through here with a little Dremel or something. And I'm going to notch this out so that this piece right here still gets into that flush part. And where that screw goes, I'm going to take the strap off and put the screw back in and leave it sticking out. And what this latch will then do is we'll come down and it'll hook onto that screw. And then it'll pull up and it should latch tight up against the kayak. That's the plan. And we have to do all four. And like I said, uh, they told me that some vibes, these, these straps might be closer to, closer than others if you get, if you get a Seagose because the molds are just a little bit off. So maybe some of these will be even where you don't have to trim this at all, you know. But so what we're going to do is I'm going to go ahead and take out all four of these screws. We're going to pull the straps off and we're going to take and we're going to pull these down. And I'm going to mark right here where I think that this, this piece right here should go into that groove, pull up, and then latch shut. So let's do that now. It's really good if you've got a little bitty short screwdriver. These take Phillips heads. A uh, long one might not be able to get in here, so if you can get a little short one in here, a little stubby. And then we're just going to take these off. So what you're left with is this little threaded insert and I think I'm not sure I don't want to just guess but this is this is the same screw I think it may be a t5 but it comes with these stainless ones that are already in here and what we're gonna do is we're gonna set these to the side and we're gonna take the straps off all the way around because we're not gonna use the straps anymore Okay, now we have all the straps are off. We've got them put to the side. And what we're left with is four of these screws and washers. I don't think I'm gonna reuse the washers, but what I wanna to try to do is I'm hoping that these screws are gonna be long enough to just tighten in. And maybe, maybe I'm gonna find something. Let's see if I can show you guys this. Maybe I can find something uh, a smaller washer or something all we want it to do is to stick off the kayak far enough that this will grab uh, we could screw it in to a certain point and leave it and leave it out until we find our desired position that's going to grab and pull up tight and lock this seal down for us but once we get that desired position what we're going to have to do is find something that's going to fill the gap between here and here that way we can actually tighten this down tight and it, we know it's not going to back out and go anywhere on us but our next step is is now that we've got everything off and we've got the screw out you can see that let me get a better shot here for you this does not line up this does not line up with this gap you see this gap this little recess pocket here this is we're wanting to make sure that this fits inside that recess pocket and since it it hits it halfway I'm gonna mark with a sharpie where this hits and then I'm gonna notch out the outside part so that we have a piece of this hook that actually goes in there and grabs it because right now it's not gonna grab anything because it's hitting this side wall it's gonna hit that wall and we're not gonna be able to get in there and actually lock on and latch this thing down so I'm gonna get a, a sharpie we're gonna make sure everything is flush and center where we want it 
and I'm going to mark and I'm just going to grab adrenaline. We're going to notch out and I'm going to do a little bit of time to make sure that I don't take out too much because I want to make sure I've got as much, much of this hook as possible so that I can actually have a, you know, I don't want to end up with just a little bitty piece of hook and then end up breaking it off. I want to use as much as possible that's going to get in there. So I'm going to make sure that my wobble up here, because you see there's a little bit of a play. So I'm going to make sure that this is pulled all the way over this way when I mark it. That way I'm, I'm saving as much as this as I can to get in there and actually grab onto that screw. So let's do that now. All right, so I'm going to slide this all the way this way. And I'm trying to do this and not look at the camera screen that way. So let's see. It looks like it's going to be right in there somewhere and you can see my mark. So we're going to be keeping this side. This side is what's going to grab our latch and I'm going to notch out just the hook, just the hook in. I'm not going to take a lot off. But I'm going to notch it up and then go across and hopefully that's going to be enough to fit flush and grab that latch. Uh, I'm going to do this with a Dremel. I have a little handheld Dremel. If you don't have a Dremel you could do this really carefully with like a small little uh, uh, handsaw, like a tiny little hacksaw. Uh, whatever that can make a really good cut. You don't want to use anything big that's going to grab and just rip the, pl rip the plastic to pieces. You could even do this with a box cutter if you're really careful and just keep, you know, just keep pushing and cutting until you cut through it. It's, it is just plastic. It's a thick plastic, but I think you could do it with no problem with a really good box cutter. Double check that. I think that's going to be about right. Oh, this one's going to be really fun. Let's see if I can get it from this side better. Make sure you don't mess up and, and cut off the wrong side. Like just now I was thinking to make sure that you, you don't want to cut off this notch and then go fold it and be like, oh crap. So we're going to keep this back one and we're going to cut the front piece off. And there's lines, if I didn't tell you guys, there's like a little mold line right across here. And that's what I've been judging to cut off and it seems like it's just the right spot. screw in and she latches up the h24 guys uh, that's this is actually their logo right here if you want to check it out I added it had one of my one of their logos to my kayak but these guys they sell these uh, they're called I think they called them bungee buttons uh, and I'll, I'll put a link to their website to their bungee buttons they sell 
and they advised me to get some of those bungee buttons because all it is is just like a little hard round button and you put your screw through the through the hole of the button and you you tighten it down and they said that that gives them the perfect uh, length on the screw and then they just take a Dremel and they flatten off the bottom of that bungee button instead of the screw and plus it gives you a little bit wider of a head to bite down on so I'll probably I'll probably get a hold of them guys and, and tell them to send me some of those bungee buttons if I can't find any here in my shop I've got a drunk junk drawer full of all kind of extra parts and stuff from me doing all these DIY projects so I probably got some here but I'm gonna give you guys an overview of this uh, thing how it looks on the boat so here's what it looks like on the boat after it's installed. I'm we'll gonna try to do a good walk around for you guys. It latches down good. I think it sits a little bit lower than the, the uh, factory one that comes on the boat. It's really good. I think it's, this is gonna be a really good addition and you just open the hatches on the side, pull up on this end folds all the way to the front and you can access everything that you got in there and these rubber gaskets right here look how thick that is those are some really thick rubber gaskets Make sure you don't shut your latches up in the inside like that listen to this airtight seal pull them back up lock them back down Well, that's going to do it for this video. I appreciate you guys watching. If you like this video, please make sure you give it a thumbs up and don't forget to hit that subscribe button and check out my other videos. If you're interested in upgrading your old, ordinary, no hinge hatch on your kayak, give the guys at H24 Outdoors a call. I'm going to link all of their info in the description of this video. Call up there and ask for James or Brandon. That's the, uh, that's the owner and the manager. They're very knowledgeable. They know what they're talking about. They sell five kayaks and they also sell a lot of other brand kayaks in their store. Uh, they know what they're talking about. If, you, if you're curious that they might have one of these that fits your boat, give them a call. This is called the Mod Pod 2 and I think it's going to be a great addition to my boat and it might be a good addition to yours. Thanks for watching. Make sure you become a member of the Yak Squad by hitting that subscribe button. When you hit the subscribe button, make sure you hit the little bell right beside it so you can get notified every time I go live or I upload one of these videos. Thanks for watching and I'll catch you guys next time.